Coming off 3-9 and nine and 0-8 and in the SEC, Boston College went through a litany of quarterbacks due to injury and ineffectiveness in 2015. So the Eagles, without a quarterback this past season, really may have found one for 2016. We bring in Dan Rubin from BC Interruption with uh, the news of a transfer. And uh, this, uh, this could be a good get for you, Dan. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to be some stability to the program, which uh, which they definitely need after last year. Uh, they they announced yesterday, or the announcement coming yesterday, that Patrick Tolls from uh, or Towels, I can never remember how to pronounce his name. I believe sure it's Tolls. It's Tolls. I, I have a feeling that I'll learn it before the year is over. Uh, but Patrick Tolls from uh, from the University of Kentucky announces via his brother's YouTube channel that uh, on his brother's YouTube show that he's going to be transferring to Boston College for his fifth year of eligibility. So exciting. Finally, some excitement to the BC football program after what was a, uh, a really trying year. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this being the start of, of something good for BC. So based on what you saw last season and what you have coming back, would you expect much of a quarterback competition in the spring? No, not really. I think Tolls is the is the guy. I think he's uh, they're bringing him in specifically to be the starting quarterback. Um, it, it's going to be a shift in offensive mindset. I know that from Boston College. They are not going to be a uh, that option run team that they were a year ago, or at least they set out to be a year ago. Uh, by the middle of the season, they they didn't really have an offensive mindset because of the the attrition at quarterback and in at other positions. So. Hopefully this means that he comes in, he has the starting job, Darius Wade can get that medical red shirt and repeat his sophomore year, get another year of development before he has to be the starting quarterback again as a junior, um, really provide that stability that wasn't there and that probably should have been there last year. I think it's a the year gap in the, in the stalling of, of the development of these players uh, because they had to play and had to play in a situation where they weren't very good at quarterback. You bring in a guy like Toll specifically for one season. It's a stopgap. Maybe you can get back to those six or seven wins like you had in 2014 and continue the process of growing the program. Uh, Mark, I'm sure you know as, as well as anybody that uh, when it comes to, to programs in college football, one extra year of development can be absolutely crucial, and, and BC is going to be able to get that by bringing in Tolls. So I'm not going to try to fool anyone that I've seen Patrick Tolls game in, game out, but I've seen him here and there, seen the highlights. Kentucky doesn't grab a whole lot of attention, but at the same time, they do play in the SEC. And Mark Stoops has put together back-to-back -to -back top 20 recruiting classes. One of those included Drew Barker, who was arguably by most services a top two to three quarterback nationally coming out of high school. But Patrick Tolls was able to hang on to the starting job, had a really nice season in 2014, 14 TDs, nine picks. Most notably, I saw him against Mississippi State when the Bulldogs were number one in the country, and he drove him insane, put up like uh, 38, 40 points, something in that range. Almost pulled off the upset in Lexington, 390 yards passing, two TDs, no picks. That was the highlight game for him in 2014. This past year, rough season, flipped the TDs and picks, nine TDs, 14 picks, 56%. You got to look at the Mizzou game as being his standout uh, effort of the year, 22 for 27, two TDs, no picks in that one. So Patrick Tolles sees the writing on the wall with Kentucky, moves on to BC where, hey, if he can... Uh, have some semblance of the same defense that you had in 2015 and have that typical Boston College running game and actually have a quarterback who I wouldn't say is necessarily a classic dual threat guy, but he can move around and he makes uh, the defense account for the run uh, out of the pocket. Uh, you, you know, you, you can make some things happen on offense and considering what it was in 2015, anything, a, a live body uh, in uh, the quarterback position is going to help. Yeah, we, we always said if BC even had a bad offense, they'd have won six games last year with that defense. It was the uh, 127th ranked out of 128 teams out of uh, in total offense, which is great because they were number one in total defense. So even some semblance of an offense, even you accidentally score a couple of, of touchdowns and, and Boston College flips the switch and wins six or seven games, possibly even eight when you go back over some of the teams that they lost to by, by less than – seven points like the wake forest game for starter duke um games like that they're, they're all of a sudden now back in, in all they had to do was really go five and seven six and six and they probably would have been in the bolt conversation with the way things went this year 
but that wasn't to be the, you know, you, you got to win three or four more games somewhere along the line. The non-conference schedule next year is certainly doable with UMass, UConn, uh, Wagner as your FCS game, uh, Buffalo as your fourth game out of the MAC. You, you have a doable non-conference schedule, and all you're really looking for is for the defense to not fall off a cliff, uh, which I don't think it will, even if they – even if they play a little bit more poor than they did this year and they're not as elite, uh, you're still looking at a potential top 20 defense, which means that all Tolls has to do is not screw everything up on offense. Um, there's, they're going to tailor the offense around them. They're going to move to a pro style offense. They're going to have John Hilleman back. The offensive line is going to be able to block straight ahead and not have to worry more about the way that they were blocking it this past year with the pistol. Uh, you get a couple of wide receivers who probably should have been playing this past year who were out with injury. Ben Glines, who's a slot receiver. Chris Garrison. Uh, Elijah Robinson, who had a case of the dropsies this year, has a chance to to be an over-the-top style guy. You bring in a couple more big-name wide receiver recruits, and you always have a couple of fallback options like Tyler Rouse out of the backfield and, and players like that. Tommy Sweeney, as a tight end, established himself to be able to catch two or three balls when they're – actually got him thrown his way. Um, so all you really need for that offense to not stink everything up is have a quarterback who can know how to read a defense, who knows how to get the ball out to, to one or two guys here and there, play a little bit like Chase Reddick did back in 2013 when all he had to do was manage the game. Toll certainly can do that as long as, you know, in, in, as long as he doesn't, uh, as long as he's able to pick up the offense, a stripped down version of it. And like you said, Mark, he's able to take off. He has a little bit of quickness. Um, he's a big dude too. He's six foot five, 240 pounds with a little bit of quickness. Uh, you know, he's a dream come true for Boston college fans right now. And, and even if he's not live, even if he can't live up to that hype, even, you know, we, we hail him as this great savior. It, he's going to be a savior just because he can step in there and complete more than two passes a game. And as long as he doesn't go two for 30, uh, or three for 20 or whatever it was uh, that, that some of the performances BC had out of their quarterback position. Uh, you know, that's that's all you can ask for. And people said Steve Adazio needed to change his offensive mindset. He, they said the quarterback position wasn't ready. They said, he said way too often, we're playing with too many young guys. He goes out and gets a fifth year transfer. That's all you can ask for for next year out of BC. I'm going to take a shot at the stat line for Patrick Tolles in 2016. I think he gives you a 55 to 58% completion percentage. He throws 15 TDs, and hopefully he keeps with some good coaching, keeps the picks down to 8 or 10, something in that range. And, and again, it's at least a passing threat to balance the run and help out the defense. And as a side note, of course, for the second time in three years, you will have a former SEC starting quarterback as your starting quarterback there at BC. So it's yep. uh, Tyler Murphy worked out well, uh, but again, that was that was a clear cut case mark where where Adazio brought in a guy, tailored the offense around him, realized Murphy was uh, a poor passing quarterback but had elite speed. They ran option run till they died and and were able to rack up 400 yards of offense by running the football. So hey, like you always say, top 20 class uh, at Kentucky. He's a he was an elite 11 quarterback, Patrick Tolls, but. I mean, top 20 recruiting class at, in the SEC means you're still, what were we talking about? It's like, what, what did Spurrier say? You're like the, the 10th or 11th, the league. something in that yeah. range. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, SEC, Kentucky's always going to be Kentucky there. Uh, you know, it's an uphill battle. So he, he played well for Kentucky. And I'm, I'm excited uh, for the first time in probably, you know, two months about Boston College football. And uh, it feels good, even though we're going into bowl season without a without a, a bowl game. It, it feels good to be able to look ahead and know that maybe the that next year at this time we'll be we'll be looking at a bowl game and not at a uh, and not a golf season. Patrick Toll is definitely an upgrade coming from uh, Kentucky to Boston College as quarterback here in 2016. Dan Rubin joins us from BC Interruption. Dan, we appreciate you jumping on board, giving us some instant analysis. Hey, happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> 